Are you guys ready? I think we are. So Damien will come up after me. Um, I was super excited. Damien works in the Munich office here. We're partnering a lot with the Basel team internally. And I was like, we should have something to mix things up a little bit, talk about future stuff. Damien wrote a great talk. And I went through the talk, and I was like, this is amazing. And I was like, what if someone went through this talk and didn't understand the context of what we're doing at Dart? So like, maybe we should add some context. So I'll do that first so I didn't have to teach Damien about it all, because he's working on a huge build system that supports lots of languages. So let's look. This is the, kind of the forward to his talk about the, deb, the Dart web workflow. It's a very touchy clicker. So we've talked a lot about the summit you know, from our customers. Now for the second time, it's great hearing it about People love you know, having a fast dev cycle. Um, obviously, on the website, they want to be able to build for production. And they need to do things like code generation and code transformation. Like, You just need to do that. And obviously, the great talk yesterday about source gen and that type of work um, makes it obvious. Thank you. And so we have solutions for this now, right? We say use pub, pub build, pub serve. Use barback and transformers. I've talked to people who've written a bunch of their own transformers. This is a really great model. It's 100% Dart, so it ships in the box, and it's fast. Well, if you're using Dartium. And if your app is on the smaller side, and if you don't have a lot of transformers. So when, uh, when Will and others talked about how th things got kind of slow, that's what happened. Because all these things are built on big global analysis of things. We have a, when you do code generation, you usually want to look at the analysis of your code. Generating that big AST, or that big uh, analysis context, takes a long time. And you have to do it every time you build. Um, Dart to JS does global inference, and it looks at all the code, and so that takes a long time. Um, and that's just part of the problems. And if you look at what we do with uh, barback, with transformers, um, it lets you overwrite files, which seems nice, but actually ends up being really bad, because then if you look at things like um, source maps and stack traces, does the stack trace point to the generated file or my original file? It's not clear. Um, if you're doing pub serve, all the intermediate files are actually in memory, so there's actually no place to look at you know, the source map and the stack trace. And obviously, if you do a pub build, um, unless you flip certain flags, those files even are, aren't even on disk. And obviously, every time you build, you start from scratch. And that can take a long time. We've had people internally take many, many minutes. It's, you have a very long coffee break for a full build from scratch. Um, so what's the solution here? Well, I actually stole a bunch of these slides from VJ. Thank you. I didn't tell him in advance. Um, he talked about this yesterday in the dev compiler talk, right? Which is, we have many megabytes of code, complex dependencies. How do you solve this? And the way you solve this is, and obviously, you know, all the things. And comp compilation to JavaScript isn't even on this list, right? Um, and even things that aren't even necessarily Dart specific, like you can take a protobuf and turn it into Dart code. The way we do that is internally is with a system called Bazel. And so it gives you amazing parallelism. And it gives you caching. And guess what? That's how you do things quickly. Like, make solve this a long time ago, right? And so the idea is, you know, you might want to do a, a table component. Part of this is, well, how do we make sure we do code gen on that really fast and compilation on that? Oh, we'll generate a summary and actually save that summary to disk. And then in parallel, we can do the JS stuff while we're summarizing it. And then we can do the summary of another component and build that in parallel. And it ends up that your, your main line here, you just have to worry about what your slowest component is, because a lot of this can be parallelized. And this is actually a poor example, because I see four kind of parallel threads. But you know, if you have eight cores, it could be eight things. And, if, you know, and that's only in one machine. So what's beautiful about the Bazel model, what we use internally, is it's one model. So the way you generate summaries, the way you run source gen, the way you, when you do template comp um, injection, even the way you compile to JavaScript, they're all one system. Like the way we generate JS is just another build output, along with how we generate summaries. So we have a single model for how all these things work. Um, everything's on disk, which means your source maps and your stack traces, you can go find those files. There are, you know, in some cases, they might be in some weird temp directory. You don't necessarily care, because you can debug through it. Um, it's 100% incremental, even between builds. All those incremental outputs are cached. You can run things in parallel. It figures out the build tree and actually can run things in parallel. Um, and it's the exact same model we have internally, which means you get all the benefits we do. When we make fixes and changes and improve things, um, folks that use our frameworks get the same stuff. Um, so that all sounds great. Before we jump into uh, to Bazel stuff, I was just to say don't panic if you're using Pub today. Um, these things aren't going anywhere. And in fact, the Angular story that we give you today, and you run Pub Serve and it runs Transformers, it works great. That exact same code runs in Bazel internally. And actually, we have one copy of things like the template generator and the dependency injection generator. There's one copy, and it works in both. 
And so if you write your own transformers, let's talk, because your model will change a little bit. We have a bunch of code already out in public and open source, where you basically write your code once, and then it can go either to Bazel and the source gen model, or to transformers. Um, and if you don't write your own transformers, this will just come along, and you'll get all the benefits. So hopefully I've given some context and belayed some fears, and now we can talk about Bazel specifically. So I give you Damian. Thank you. Does it, do, you, do you hear me? Ah, oh, great. OK. So Bazel um, is the Google home build system. Um, it's called Blaze internally. And uh, the previous speakers talk that they were dog fooding it for uh, six months. We were dog fooding Bazel as Blaze for nine years. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, um, so we open sourced uh, Bazel last year in March 2015. And the basic for Bazel is we want a build system that is fast and correct. So we have a, a, a motor that is fast, correct, just too. A question you might ask yourself is why Google developed yet another build system. So back in 2006, uh, Google was using make files. And it was using actually a generator to make files. And the problem with that is have you seen a make file? That is a very, very clean make file from an open source project. Um, and it's really difficult to read. It's, it still has a lot of problems. And it looks a bit like that, right? It's also very slow. So if you try to build one of the largest open source projects out there, the Android open source platform, try just to, to request a dummy target, a target that does not exist. Only to do that, it will take uh, 30 seconds to load all the, uh, the make file it includes. And it does not do nothing. It, it does not do anything. So what Blaze wants to be, it wants to offer a very nice view, a very maintainable view of the build for the, for the user. Sorry. And we want something that scales to the billions of line of code of the Google uh, code repositories. And of course, that, do, that does compilation fast, because uh, every second lost for the developer is uh, money lost, because we pay, we, we pay your developer. One last thing, we want uh, the build to be correct. What does that mean? That, that means that if you ever use make file, you're probably used to do make clean, right? We have a saying in the, uh, the Blaze team to never, ever do Blaze clean. We should never have to do it. And if you take a build, take the same input, put it on another machine at, a, at another time, you will get the same result. And that's very important because that also enables a lot of uh, performance improvement because we can cache results of everything. Bezel, which is the open source Blaze, it's basically Blaze stripped down of uh, Google internals, has built-in support for uh, several major languages, Java, C++, Python, but uh, Having to modify the binary to scale up to various languages doesn't work. So we, we have an extension language, and so that we have, have that support. We also have Go, Java, Pengine, Protobuf, and many more. We work on Linux, of course. We work on OS X, and we know, we know works on Windows. And uh, we are doing a lot of work to make uh, the Windows on par with Linux and OS X. So Linux and OS X is used by uh, thousands of developers inter internally. And um, so, no, so now we are trying to offer the same experience for Windows. Of course, we want to be fast, correct. So we do a lot of things to, uh, towards that. And we will co go a bit deeper into that. Um, so we do, we do cache. We run as many parallel jobs as possible. We also sandbox our action to make sure that we are not uh, modifying inputs. And uh, we test for uh, internally on our, on our code repository. So 
Remember the make file? This is a build file. This is what Bazel does, takes as input. So it has high level representation of the language. Um, <laughs> a bit slow, sorry. So you describe what you want to build uh, as Java library, that library, and you, put, you give them a name, and you basically declare the dependencies. And that's all that Bazel needs to actually uh, perform its jobs. So thanks to that, it can be fast for X. Let's see, how, let's see what a build looks like. So we run a bunch of tests. It's running a lot of things. and run all the tests. That's a clean build, so, so it has no, no information before running that. Uh, <laughs> thank you. And it does that by constructing in memory a graph of all your dependencies. And once it has that graph, it can actually follow up which dependencies has changed and rerun the action. And then it can co also construct a graph of the artifacts that you need to create from that, uh, that graph of dependency and execute the action to generate those uh, artifacts. So if you rerun the same build, it actually does nothing. It just rerun, uh, return you the same uh, information that it returns before, and it's also say that it has cached the test result. And why can we ca cache test result? Because we know that we, uh, we have a correct behavior of a rule. So, so if we run a test twice, we don't need to, to run it a second, another time. We ju can just say, OK, it passed before, so, so it, should, it, it must have passed. Now, let's see what we do when we actually touch a file. So let's touch a file. Sorry, I'm not fast at typing. <laughs> and yeah, we didn't do anything because, so we touch a file, we validate everything in it, in, uh, done in the dependency graph, but we actually, after that, we actually see that the file has changed, so we don't do anything. Let's actually modify a file. So let's start by modifying uh, just a test, like, so it's a leaf, in the, if you think of the dependency graph. Sorry, still. So let's just edit a test and add a command. And then test again. And by the way, VM is better than Emacs. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we, we will run only the, the test that has changed and no other action. So we, we don't do. Uh, extra work, we just reduce the, the work that is needed. And so let's modify uh, instead the uh, library. And there's not enough exclamation marks, so let's add another one. And then we run the test. So we do a bit more, not, notably the dart to js compiler, and we just rerun the two, uh, the two tests that, have, that are de dependent on that. So how does that work is when we do a modification, we just see uh, the actions that need to be run, but not, does not run the other actions. Our last word, this is an extract of the build of Bazel itself. Bazel is, is a multi-language uh, system by itself. It uses C++, Java, Python, Protobuf, Shells. We have a lot of things. And um, the interesting thing in that is you can see 200 actions running. So we basically, uh, because we maintain that graph in memory and we know the dependency, we, we can start uh, running the action as soon as possible with, uh, uh, with being sure that we don't have a um, problem running those actions in parallel. Okay. Um, so as Kevin mentioned, what, what if you don't want to write Bazel files, then you don't have to because the um, Dart team has come up with a build file generator um, that will just like generate those build files, run Bazel, and you will get the same incrementality model and uh, get the same, the same performance that if you are running uh, Bazel natively. 
However, if you want to use Bazel with Java, with some other language, then you can just uh, start uh, taking those, uh, those brief generated by uh, the generator, start editing them, and add, add some more targets. Um, that's about all. Uh, our website is bazel.build, and uh, thank you for your attention. So a couple of things to add um, to be really clear as far as how Bazel affects Dart and your work here, because obviously this is very important. Um, if you look at our Git repo, you'll notice that there's a couple of projects. There's rules Dart and Bazel. We're working on some code here. We're not ready for you to use this in production. It's still very early. You'll see these Bazel files and these build files, these workspace files. Um, if you're really excited and curious, go play. But this is not something we're supporting. We're, you know, we try to get things bootstrapped. So our goal is to get Angular 2 working externally all the way, and that means we have code generation working, template generation, all those things. Once we get to that point, we might kind of go out and say, go play with this some more. But I want to be very clear. Our goal is that if you are just doing Dart, pure Dart, we call it the classic Dart or simple Dart app, meaning you're not compiling protobufs in C++ in the background. You guys you aren't all doing that? <laughs> it's cool. We do it a lot internally. I do it for funsies. Um, we really want Bazel to be an implementation detail, a spectacular implementation detail that makes things super fast for you, but you shouldn't have to worry about it. And then the idea is, if you want to grow up and you know, do more things um, in the broader sense, do bigger projects, do cross-language projects, then your fall down will be Bazel, which means we don't have to write all these crazy one-off support for XYZ and Dart. Bazel will be the underlying system. So if you stay simple Dart, you get all the benefits of the Bazel, and you won't have to learn Bazel scripting language, and you'll be able to upgrade to full Bazel if you want to do other awesome things. And I think uh, current users are folks like TensorFlow is a big user of Bazel already. Um, there's folks taking off with this, and they really like it. Um, so we have a few minutes for questions. Is there anything about Bazel before we jump to lunch? Any questions? Always. <laughs> and I'll, I'll repeat the question. What about CSS files, images, other binary assets? So, so normally you declare dependencies on those files, so we see them. Uh, and we also have, uh, I guess, we do, uh, so, so we do have globing, so you don't, uh, if you, you don't have to worry. You just glob your directory and basically we see it. So I th basically, it's, if you just have all these things need to go to this directory, and that's it, then it'll just be an X copy. And then if you have other things that consume those images, I mean, I remember in my previous web framework Spriting. days, if you can do spriting and stuff, then you'll say those are my inputs to my sprite rule, my sprite target. And then if you modify those files, the sprite target will run, and it'll generate new sprite. And that's really exciting, because you can imagine, oh, there's some Node thing, or some Ruby thing, or some Java thing that does spriting. Okay. And all you want is, I want content in this directory so I can use these sprites. You can bring in the Java rule or the whatever rule for spriting in Java or C++, drop it into your Bazel field, and you just run Bazel build, and it'll just work. Did you add one? Uh, I was curious about, um, I think Blaze like, contributes across different um, machines. So like, in a CI environment, do we like, use Bazel to do that? OK. So the question is, um, so does this work across machines? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> so we have a prototype uh, implementation of the API to, uh, to talk to a, a distributed cluster, and we're in uh, the middle of rewriting it to, uh, to give a more a stable uh, version of it that we would use, too. Future. So, so it's experimental, and it's going to be stable soon. So what's great is you'll have, at least in the Dart world, you'll have a better experience than you have today on one machine, and then all the future work that Bazel does in any of those paths, you just get for free. Are people hungry? Oh, OK. Uh, why don't you start from Maven? Why do you write it from scratch? And why do you not improve uh, Why didn't you start from Maven? <laughs> I'm not enough of a Java person, but I'll. Uh, <laughs> or Grunt. So that, that's fun, because or, uh, or be, before joining Google, Lee. I was actually using a lot of Maven. And, uh, it fe it feels terrible, sorry. So Maven ran all the tests, for example. It's super slow. Um, I wasn't here around the time that the, that place was started. And uh, the problem also Maven, like if you do something more than Java, you feel you really feel the pain of using it. And uh, so I, uh, Google was uh, like it's multi-language. There is C++, Java, Go, 
And so they need something that, that works across language. You guys about ready for some lunch? Oh, so we'll do one more question. You're the last one. Make it count. So, so what language do I write a plugin for Bazel in? So this, this is a uh, uh, Hohon language that is called Skylark, but it's actually a subset of Python. So the reason it's not fully Python, it's for a correctness issue. We don't want to, uh, the, the writer to actually uh, generate things that have side effects. So to repeat the question, what are the other public milestones? Oh. I think it's posted on the website. Yes, we, are, we have a, a public roadmap. It's on, the, on our website. Uh, we're about to reach. A, we're, we're going to announce 0.4 uh, this uh, next week. So if you want to follow, you can. And I want to add one more thing. One of the things we're working on with the Dart team is that there'll be low-level Skylark rules written in Skylark. And there's a very good reason it has its own language. I should repeat that because everyone's like, why another language? Like, you want purely functional subset of Python sounds you awesome. You want guaranteed correctness so you get hermeticness. Like, no one wants a distributed build system that does things incorrectly and meshes up the caching because we're all very sad. Um, uh, but in the Dart world, what we're looking at is we'll have low level Bazel rules. At least this is our current plan. We're working on it. We'll have low level Bazel rules. We'll write the Bazel. And the idea is then you can just write Dart code and configuration on top to do your transformation, and you'll just call down to a Dart library and say, cool, and write some YAML, and it'll just keep, it'll work. Uh, um, Nate's in back saying, damn, PM, why are you making promises? But we, we, we think we can do that. It's, it's not only for that. I mean, the other language, uh, that we, we vendor a lot of rules for various language. We have closure compilers. We have uh, SAS, uh, Rust. And uh, we try to, to, to vendor them so, so you can just use them out of the box. You don't have to write your own. Thank you.